thousands of mourners have begun filing past the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II. She's lying in state at Westminster Hall for the next four days. A five-kilometer queue is stretching through London as mourners wait to pay their respects. It's expected that as many as one million will attempt to visit the coffin ahead of Monday's state funeral. The Metropolitan Police says the Queen's funeral and the lying in state are the biggest security operations they faced. Those in the queue say they are ready for the long wait. We've planned overnight if need be, so yeah. we've brought plenty of picnic with us, so yeah, we're here till... Got some warm to wear, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> ready for everything, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> Raincoats and woolly hats. <laughs> all night. I don't mind. All night and all tomorrow. We're here for the duration. We're here until we've walked past and seen the Queen and bowed to the Queen. That's why we come. I just think she's she's just been a, a continuous part of my entire life, most people's entire lives. Um, and it felt like a fitting way to celebrate her by getting in a huge queue. <laughs> I'm ready for the wait. <laughs> I come to say thank you for all that uh, the Queen has given to our country and uh, to say goodbye and God bless you. We, we think we think it's going to be about five hours um, now. So, uh, so yes, that's what we're planning to do. And uh, we'll see, you know, see how it goes. I'm just keeping an eye on my wife in front too, so, so I don't lose her. But uh, yeah, we, we, we'll queue for that length of time. And, uh, for more on this, we can cross live to London and join our rise correspondent, Lakwe Olarinoye. Lakwe, thanks so much for joining us on Newsday. Now, there are said to be tens of thousands lined outside Westminster's Hall, where the Queen is lying in state. How long are people having to wait? Well, uh, good afternoon to you ladies. Well, first of all, people are having to wait an estimated amount of 30 hours. I happen to uh, have gone past there on my way home um, and actually, I spoke to one of the people that were, that were there, and she had been there um, as early as Tuesday afternoon. So some people would have been waiting for about 48 hours now just to see the Queen and just to pay those last respects. Some of them, it was their dying wish to see her before they too die as well. Um, and of course... There's an expected amount of a million people over the four days that the Queen will be lying in state at the Westminster Hall. Um, and so the way in which it's been run is that they're trying to keep people moving and walking across. And the, the queue is said to be as long as five miles. That is, uh, you know, a stretch. So it's going right across, as you can see in those pictures at Lambeth Bridge, right down to uh, Southwark Bridge, past the London Bridge, and it stops at about Tower Bridge. So that is a really, really long queue, and people aren't perturbed by it at all. People are willing to wait. People are, uh, in typical British fashion, happy to stay on the queue uh, so far as that they get to see the Queen. They are being given wristbands as a way of identification, um, but the government and the officials there have said that not everybody will get to see uh, the Queen, because as you can imagine, 200,000 people so far, and they're expected a million. It just might not be possible. Truly a historical moment. Uh, that must be an enormous logistical operation. What security parameters are in place that you can see? Well, there are a few uh, ways in which that the security officials are being able to man <laughs> this amount of crowd, really. First of all, everybody has to queue on one side of of the bridge you're not really allowed to walk uh, as freely as you'd like so there's an orderly queue happening they are said to be about over 30,000 police officers across London um, many of which have been deployed from other parts of the country to basically uh, control the crowd the terror threat isn't as high as it usually is um, and that's because officials and all the kind of uh, security officials are more concerned about the sheer amount of crowd that they're expecting and they can't honestly predict and just the pictures that you're looking at now is just uh, nearby uh, Buckingham Palace I believe and uh, that just shows you how many people and there's said to be more and more people um, so on ground at the moment the security officials are basically uh, trying to keep people orderly together and not spread out there's severe road closures transport wise um, stations are said to be avoided because of the amount of people coming through those tracks 
uh, specific train stations to get to places like Buckingham Palace, Green Park, and of course, Westminster Hall, where the Queen is being laid to rest. So the security officials have it under control, if you like, but it's unpredictable because the crowd seems to be getting more and more as the days go by. Well, now when the Queen's funeral guest list is starting to take shape, who can we expect to attend? Well, there are said to be over 50 heads of states from around the world uh, showing up for the Queen's uh, funeral on Monday. Uh, a number of European uh, uh, royal families as well, like that of the, uh, the, the royal family of Spain, the royal family of the Netherlands, and even the royal family in Japan, which will be the first time uh, that the uh, premier of Japan will be attending uh, a foreign event since uh, assuming the throne. So there is said to be a very colourful invite list. Those who are not invited on the flip side happen to be, of course, Vladimir Putin uh, of Russia because of the Ukraine war, um, as well as uh, the leader of Myanmar, the military junta, and of course, the Belarusian uh, pr uh, president as well, because he's said to be supporting uh, the Russian uh, president. So there is a sense of um, not invited uh, list, as well as those who are invited. Um, it's also worth noting here very quickly that the capacity of the venue where the funeral will be taking place can only take 2,200 people. So some of those heads of states have been told that they can't travel with their security officials, they can't um, come with more than one other person, that possibly their spouse, and they've been advised not to drive to the venue. They are all being uh, transported in a bus. Um, and that includes the royal families abroad, as well as the heads of states from around the world albeit um, excluding the United States uh, President Joe Biden, who is allowed to drive to the venue. But yeah, it seems to be a very colourful invite list, and that list is still taking shape as we speak. Well, Lakba, but we're hearing reports that a group of MPs and peers are asking that the Chinese government's invite to the Queen's funeral should be withdrawn owing to the alleged um, genocide against Uyghur minorities. How true is this? That's correct. But um, as you can imagine, the royal family um, and the royal institution tend to be apolitical, especially across the, the reign, the 70 year reign of uh, the late queen. She did not really express her political views and was always an advocate of soft diplomacy. I'm not really sure if the Queen would have wanted politics at her funeral. Um, but at the same time, the interference of the British government um, may not be welcomed by the palace officials uh, simply because the invite was extended to China, um, but they may not show up, not because of uh, the supposed the genocide that's happening in China, but actually because uh, no, no, none of the heads of state in China have left since uh, the pandemic started in uh, early or late 2019. So there may be other reasons why they aren't coming, but uh, the political interference may just not be welcomed. And that's because of the way in which the Queen, the queen chose to go about her reign, being neutral and apolitical, and of course, being an advocate of soft diplomacy. And as most of the UK lines up to see the coffin in Westminster Hall, do you know what uh, plans they have for the King and his siblings and the other royals who might want to view as well without the uh, presence of the crowd. So yesterday, um, Howard, the, the royal family and the wider members of the royal family, like the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren, had the opportunity um, to welcome the Queen's body uh, when she first arrived from Edinburgh, from Belfast, rather. Um, she was. They were able to... Um, welcomed the Queen at Buckingham Palace and they held a vigil there and that vigil dates back to 1936 known as the Prince's Vigil and the first time it took place was when the Queen's grandfather died and her father along with his brothers held the vigil and led that vigil um, and they stand around the, the coffin um, and hold this vigil in honour and commemoration of the monarch's life. We've seen that happen twice now, first at Edinburgh um, in St Giles's Cathedral and again at Buckingham Palace and that opportunity was given to the royal family to have that intimate private moment um, that they've been grieving quite publicly um, at the palace. Now in terms of kind of 
when they would have more of that time would possibly be after the funeral where the queen is said to her body is said to be interred at Windsor Castle which is uh, a few miles away from Buckingham Palace but they and the royal family and the wider royal family who are all invited to the funeral by the way will be able to then go away and possibly have a quieter moment away from some of those cameras um but for now uh because of the kind of family that that the royal family are um unfortunately are unfortunately depending on how you look at it they are having to grieve publicly uh, because this is about a life of service um, and a life of public duty. Um, but just in answer to your kind of second question, which was about the king, um, he is said to be resting in his country home in Gloucester, Gloucester um, in Highgrove. Um, he is having a rest day following a number of tours uh, that he's been doing around the UK. And he also has to be in Cardiff to welcome yet again another motion of condolence from the Welsh Parliament tomorrow, ahead, of course, of the Queen's funeral on Monday morning. Well, Lapa, can you just very briefly tell us what time the funeral is expected to hold on Monday and how long is it expected to last? Well, the funeral is set to start at 11 a.m. on Monday morning. Of course, the heads of states and all the other invitees will have, will come in before that. Um, it will be uh, led by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, um, as well as other uh, most senior reverends um, from the Church of England and wider. Um, Typically, we're going based off of all the lengths of the other services that have been happening across other parts of the UK. It's just over an hour. Um, but of course, all the pomp and pageantry that comes with um, royal events, it could um, go as far as two hours. It's just too early to say, but we do know that it will be starting at the prompt hour of 11 o'clock on Monday morning. Well, Lakbe, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and for all of your commentary. It was very necessary at this time. Thank you.